So now that you understand a little bit more about 2D arrays, we can talk about how to create 2D terrains. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about 2D tile-based worlds, how to create them, and some of the technical difficulties that you might run into. So if you've played any of the classic games from the 80s, you might have seen landscapes that look like this. Systems back then really didn't have a whole lot of memory to play around with, so they couldn't just draw a large background image. Instead, they would divide the landscape into a 2D array of tiles. In this case, you can see that we have a 16 by 10 2D array, and we could store this as a 2D array of ints where a number might represent a green mountain tile and another number might represent sand. Now your next question is probably where are we getting these images? You've probably already gone over animated sprites, but if you haven't, you may want to go back and see how those work. Essentially, the sprite sheet contains all the visual information that we're going to need to render the overworld. In this case, I just found one online. And while this sprite sheet is actually stored as a texture 2D, we're actually going to treat it in a similar fashion to how we treat 2D arrays. For one thing, you can note that this sprite sheet is actually 18 tiles across by 8 tiles high. You should also note that each tile is 16 by 16 pixels big, but it does have a 1 pixel border around the edge. So essentially what we're going to do is to say that the upper left hand tile is tile 0, the one to the right of that is 1, the one to the right of that is 2, and so on, all the way down to tile 17 on the far upper right. If we drop down to the next row, you can see that we have tile 18, tile 19, and so on. So the next problem we have to face is how to locate arbitrary tiles in the sprite sheet. For example, how do I find the 61st tile? Well, if you were to count them out, you would actually see that it's this green rock right here. You've probably already figured out that there's a better way than hard coding the locations of all these tiles. So as we described before, the sprite sheet is actually 18 sprites wide by 8 sprites high. So imagine we have a variable called tile type that represents which of these 144 tiles to draw. To figure out the x coordinate inside the sprite sheet, all I have to do is mod by 18. To figure out the y coordinate inside the sprite sheet, all I have to do is divide by 18. And realize that this is integer division, so it's going to return us a whole number. In this case, I'm trying to figure out where the 61st tile is, so if I mod 61 by 18, that actually gives me the value of 7. If I use integer division, 61 divided by 18 actually gives me 3. So I come over to the 7th column, the 3rd row, and you can see that we have our green rock. Now don't forget, this math only gets us the x and y coordinate within the sprite sheet. To find the correct pixel coordinate within the sprite sheet, we still have to multiply that by the size of each tile. The idea behind drawing the terrain is actually going to be very similar to how we draw animated sprites. We're going to have a source rect which tells us where to pull pixel information from, and then we're going to have a destination rect which tells us where to place those pixels. In this case, notice that our tile type is 61, so it maps back to our green rock. The next tile that we draw is going to use the same source rectangle, but it moved that destination rectangle over. And the same thing is true for the next several. So now it's time to draw some sand, which actually has a tile type of 2. So what we'll do is we'll update the source rectangle to hover over the sand tile, and moving our destination rectangle over, you can see that we can draw some sand. We'll actually do that twice, and then we update our tile type back to 61, which was the green rock. We could do this any number of times to complete the row, and then eventually complete the entire landscape. And just to make sure you appreciate what's going on, you have to remember we're trying to render this background 60 times per second. I should also quickly mention our hero who has his own sprite sheet. And even though you've already gone over this content, I figured you'd want to see it. We also have to talk about collisions. The problem arises from the fact that our hero is 16 pixels tall, and the sand here is 16 pixels tall. So for our collision detection to work correctly, we actually have to be a little bit loose when detecting collisions for the rocks that you see here in red. So with regard to the code, we're going to define a room class that uses a 2D array of tiles. The room class is also going to be the one that stores the sprite sheet. We're also going to define a tile class that's originally passed a number to its constructor to define its type. It's going to be able to calculate its own source x and source y within the sprite sheet, and it's also going to have a passable attribute which could be completely passable, completely impassable, or maybe something in between. And again, don't forget that when we're going to draw the background, we're going to use a nested loop to traverse the 2D array. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and code this up.